So this is a lick from my Lick Pack, Licks for Days, which you get as bonus content as part of my course, Making the Changes. This is lick number 14 from the minor seven section. Real quick guys, before we get into it, I wanna let you know I'm doing my free masterclass this week at a new day and time. It's gonna be Thursday at 11 a.m. That's this Thursday, September 19th. It's Big Wins for Better Improv, and we go into the core principles of improvisation. If you haven't gotten a chance to check it out yet, I hope you can make it. Make sure to click the link to, uh, to register and secure your seat, your virtual seat. See you then. So I'm gonna be talking about the rhythm first. We're in 4-4, four, four, and what we do here is superimpose 3-4 by repeating this phrase that has three beats in it, one and two and three, and then it repeats one and two and three. And when you put these two rhythms back to back, this repeated phrase, you get what sounds like 3-4. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three. Okay, but actually it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So it's kind of a cool uh, rhythmic superimposition there. Three, four superimposed over four, four. When we get to the third measure, we're pretty much back in four, four at this point. So let's talk about the pitches. We start by using the... E minor pentatonic scale, D, E, G, A, and B. If you start that on E and you put the D on top, you'll recognize this as the E minor pentatonic scale. And what's cool about minor seventh chords, in addition to other chords, is that you can use multiple pentatonic scales over them. So if you are familiar with the A minor pentatonic scale and the E minor pentatonic scale and the B minor pentatonic scale, all of those work over A minor. Check this out. So here's A minor with an A minor pentatonic scale over it. All right, here's A minor again with B minor pentatonic over it. Not bad, all right. Now let's try that E minor pentatonic scale again over the A minor chord. Cool. So we have E minor pentatonic all the way through the first two measures, and then finally we get to this C natural, which is the third of A minor seven. Remember, this is A minor seven all the way through, so just wanna make sure that's clear. Um, but we hit that third of A minor seven here, the C on the downbeat of measure three, and that finally takes us out of the land of E minor pentatonic and puts us into a more traditional A minor setting. We have the three to the two to the one, here's the three there, and then uh, G is the seven. So if we pretend this is G major right here, you know, that looks like a traditional G major phrase with the one, the five, the three, and the two. So that's one way of analyzing it, is kind of looking at it from G major. You could also look at it again from E minor. G would be the three of E minor, D would be the seven, B would be the five, and A would be the four. Or you could look at it as A minor and just see a seven followed by a four to a two and then one. So multiple ways of looking at these notes, just giving you some ideas of how you can analyze it on your own. A couple other things I wanna point out here. The first is the grace note that happens before the B. It's an A. The A grace note is a whole step below the B. A lot of people do grace notes a half step below. I actually prefer a whole step below. So instead of you have, I think it's a little slicker. Here's what it sounds like when you do a half step below. Not bad. And here's a whole step below. You could also do both and do sort of a roll. That's nice too. You have options with those grace notes. You could do a half step below, a whole step below, or both. Also, if you guys have watched or listened to any of my content previously, you know I'm a big proponent of repetition, and that's exactly what we have here. You have the repeated phrase, and then you finally have the variation, 
aka the surprise with that C. Now that C is so effective because you're expecting B. So we set up the expectation of this B each time, and then on the third time, we go to C. So it's the classic one, two, four approach to anything really. One, two, four, not referring to scale degrees or chords there, but rather just pattern and breaking the pattern. So duck, duck, goose would probably be a, a more familiar way of me describing that. When I do this phrase multiple times, once I do it twice, you're expecting me to do it again implicitly on that third time. But if I don't do that, then I have your ears perk up and it's a surprise when I go to that C. It's a subtle variation, but I'm always talking about repetition and variation, and this is a perfect example of just that. Last thing I wanna go over is at the beginning of this video, I played the lick. Just kidding, I played the lick. I played it like that, so I harmonized it, and this is gonna be great for guitarists or pianists, or if you're arranging. I'm basically just going between an A minor and a G major triad, just harmonizing that scale. And that is just sort of a, a two note harmonization there. And then harmonizing by sixths, again, two notes. Just spiced it up a little bit for you, but again, this is gonna work great on any instrument as long as you do the single note version that I demonstrated in the middle part of this video.